Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this design poster as well as save it as a template so you can use it time and time again. So let's get started. So the first thing to do is to create the background which has got a gradient across it. So if I go up to the Insert tab, go along to Shapes, click on the drop down and select the square icon here. Then go up to your document, top left hand corner, and then just click and drag. You can drag over the edges of the page, it doesn't matter. And then again, just check that that shape has gone over the top. So just drag it over the edge of the page. Once that's done, you can either double click on your shape and go up to Shape Format, or you can go along to this Format pane here. Whichever one you want to do will bring up this dialog box on the right hand side. Now this is obviously relating purely to the shape that you've highlighted and you can just about see the squares around the outside of this rectangle. You can see that it's highlighted. So we're going to go to this fill element here, click on the drop down and then we're going to go down to gradient fill. Once you click on gradient fill you'll see that a number of different options will appear. Now obviously I've been rehearsing this video so my colours have already been selected. But the way in which you use gradients is very simple. There's these little markers that appear along the edge of this box and you can add or reduce the amount of these markers using gradient stops here. So if I click on the add button here you can see that I can add a gradient stop here and I can also change this colour. You can vaguely see that there's an orange outline around this stop. That means this stop is highlighted. And if you go down to this colour icon here and click on the drop down, you can select from any colour you like, or you can go down to more colours. If you click on more colours, you have lots of different options. You have the colour wheel, and you can also go along to all the different sliders and menus that appear here to select another colour. If you don't have the colour of your choice, then you can simply use the eyedropper tool and then you can move around a document or you can insert a colour swatch and you can take colours from there as well. So let's just say I want to select another colour, let's choose this pink in the middle and select OK. You can just see that the pink has come up in the middle here and then if I move this slider you can see how my gradient on my page changes when I move these markers along. So what you need to do is you just need to select the colours that you want in your gradient. If I just change this purple to show you, click on the drop down, let's say I change it to red, then I want to go all the way to orange, click on the colour again, go to orange, and you can now see how this gradient works. If I move the marker you can see that the pink is taken towards the red, and if I move it to the right you can see it goes towards the yellow. And if I don't want this one in the middle, then I just highlight it and simply check the minus box here and it will take it away. So if I just go back to the colours that I originally chose, and then again if I want to move that gradient up slightly, I can do so. But I'm just going to leave it there for the time being. Once that gradient is set, when you then enter another shape, as I will do now, and click on gradient, it will once again give it this exact gradient but again you can go in and change it if you want to. So I'm going to go up to the insert tab again along to shapes, click on the drop down and then I'm going to go down to the circle icon. Now at the moment if I click and drag I will produce an oval but if I want a perfect circle I have to hold the shift button down and it will produce a perfect circle. But At the moment I'm just going to produce an oval. Now generally every shape that is produced will come with both an outline and a fill colour. Now if you highlight your shape, go up to Shape Format and go along to these two icons here. Shape Fill refers to the colour in the middle which we're going to change to a gradient shortly and then this one up here refers to the outline again which we can change over on the right hand menu but just to show you where they are to change them if you want to very quickly. So if we go over here to the menu, we can go to the gradient again, make sure you're on the fill menu and the bucket icon, and then just click gradient again. As you can see, the gradient has produced exactly the same with the blue at the top and the pink at the bottom. But for this particular poster, we want to turn them around. So I'm just gonna drag my marker to the right, 
and my other marker to the left and then you can see that that completely swaps that gradient. I can also reduce the transparency if I want to so if I don't want it to be quite so prominent I can change that and I can also change the brightness as well. Completely up to you. Then all I'm going to do by using this circular icon at the top, hover my cursor over the top until it turns into a circular arrow and then just click and drag and just twist that oval over to the side. To make sure the oval is in the center of my page I'm just going to click on it, go up to shape format, go along to the align tool, click on the drop down and select align to center and that will center the oval for you. The next thing is the text. So I'm going to go up to insert and along to text box. Click on the drop down and select draw text box. Then I'm just going to simply click and drag. All text boxes come with a default background of white with a black border. But what I'm going to do is enter the text first then I'm going to get rid of the background and the border. If I just click off you can see it's just a black border there. So I'm going to enter my text and for this text I just want to change the font so I've clicked inside my text box and then press the command A key to select it all, go to the home tab and go to the font section, click on the drop down and select the font of your choice. Once you're happy just make sure the text box stretches out to incorporate all the words. If you're not happy with the font size, you can go back in. It's a little bit big, so I just go back in. I'm going to use this decrease font size tool here and just click on that once. And then I'm also going to change my text from black to white. So I'm going to use this icon here, which is already white. Now the words have disappeared, but don't worry. I'm going to go up to shape format. If this if this tab doesn't appear, it's because you haven't highlighted your text box. So if I click off them both, you can see shape format disappears. If I click back onto my text box, shape format appears. So go to shape format. And then in the shape fill dialog box, click on the drop down and select no fill. And then in the outline box, click on the drop down and select no outline. And then when you check off that, you can see that your words are visible without all the background and the borders. Then of course you can move this around any way you want to. And then you can move the sides to increase or decrease the depth of those words within your text box. So you can move it around. Once you're happy, don't click off it because we need to copy and paste this. Because we've now formatted this text box, taken out the backgrounds, the borders, formatted all of the text, what we need to do is just duplicate it because it makes it far easier and far quicker to do that. So you can either hit Command or Control C, Command or Control V, or you can go up to the Home tab, make sure your text box highlighted, click on the copy icon here, click off your text box, and then go back up to paste. And then simply drag that down, And then again, just pop your text in, whatever that might be down here. And then position your text wherever you want it. So the next thing we're going to do is add a line. So go to the Insert tab, along to Shapes, click on the drop down, and just select Line. And then just click and drag. Now you can see my line has come up as a default blue thin line. We're going to change that now again by going along to our menu on the right. Again, if it doesn't appear, double click on the line or go up to Format Pane at the top here. Then go down to Line and then I'm going to change the colour to white and then I'm going to use Width here and just use the up arrow and just increase that until my line gets to the width I want it to be. So I'm going to use four points there and just drag that up. I'm just going to use my left arrow key to just nudge that so that the text lines up with the line. Then again I'm going to copy and paste that text box, double click inside, command or control A 
to highlight all the text. And then I'm just going to type my text. Then Command or Control A to highlight it all. Go up to the Home tab. You can change all the font settings here. I'm just going to increase the font size here. And probably make that bold. And because it doesn't fit, I'm going to stretch that out. And then just move that down to where I want it. Again, I can use my left and right arrow keys, up and down arrow keys, to adjust that to exactly where I want it. So now you can see as a result, my line's not quite big enough. So if I just click on the line, and then I'm just going to extend it to the end here. Once I'm happy, I can click on all of these elements and, and hold my command key down. I'm going to hit the line next because that's really difficult to highlight. And then once I've highlighted all those elements, I can then go up to Shape Format along to this Group icon here. Click on the drop down and select Group. That means that when I nudge it, that when I move this, it moves as one complete unit. And often that's quite good if you accidentally nudge a box or you click on it and move it. It moves the whole thing so you can move it together so you're not constantly lining up the text along the left hand side here. Once you're finished you can go ahead and print that off. You can come back and customise it as many times as you want and of course you can save this as a template. If you want to save it as a template it's quite important that you haven't got anything highlighted in your document. So if you highlight just this section here. It will only save this element as a template. It won't save the whole poster. So make sure you put your cursor far away from the page and click off and it will have this slightly shaded look to it. Then go right up to file at the very top of your screen next to the word icon. Click on file and go down to save as template. I'm sorry I haven't got it all on the screen. I haven't recorded my entire screen. Then I'm going to call it poster. But the important thing to note is this section here that says templates. This file here is really important because if you don't put this in that templates file, it won't be accessible from the home page of your Word software. And I'll show you that in a second. Once you've sorted that, then just click save. So then if I just close Word down, then I click on my icon again. You normally have the home tab open here. Go to Templates, go up to More Templates here, and then make sure you're on Personal. Your posters come up here, click on it, and click Create. And as you can see, what's happened here, it's come up as Document 4. It's not called Poster as you originally named it, because when you go ahead and change all of these elements, it will ask you to save it as a different document, therefore not overwriting what you've just created. And so this poster will be available time and time again for you to go in and edit it. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.